Thank you, Sudhir Prakash. Good afternoon. Um, I would have to run after this, so let me just address as many things as possible. When you talk about the composition of the house, right, I would say that there are a large number of erudite and accomplished people in the house, many of whom possibly would not have found their way through the looks of the Just on the ruling benches, you have Arun Jaiti, uh, you have Ravishan Prasad, and you have you, you, you being one of them. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, Prof. Gauda is a media student manager of Bangalore, uh, Prof. Sir, who is now in there. Uh, I uh, would always uh, try for a local ticket. This is what we do. The point is that uh, um, when uh, the government wanted to add talent, they were able to bring in Parikar and Prabhu, for example from, you know, through the status of our as well. Just to give you an example that erudition, accomplishment, you know, things like that are certainly um, very much the hallmark of the house across uh, party lines. We have many um, ex-chief ministers, people of, uh, you know, left the space in different ways, who now have a chance to um, uh, reflect and contribute to a more, you know, more uh, deliberate and dispassionate manner possible. Things that come in the way are things like the anti affection law, party whips. You know, if you look at the Nehru era, the anti dowry um, uh, joint setting, Nehru had a majority in Rajasthan. In spite of that, it was voted down. So that gives you a sense of the freedom that was exercised by members to, uh, you know, to essentially come, uh, vote on the basis of their own functions or their own views. Let me move on to one or two other themes. See, in the two years that I've been here, there have been some very good experiences, right? So one, for example, is that we've passed about 75, 80 bills in the Rajya Sabha in the last two years, when the government, the ruling, uh, the ruling party, the Lok Sabha, has been in a significant minority in the Rajya Sabha. We've even passed two constitutional amendments, the NJAC-1 and the Bangladesh border um, uh, agreement. So it's not as if legislation is always stored. It's not as if even uh, that consensus cannot be arrived at. It takes a certain amount of political give and take, and some amount of uh, convincing, but it's entirely possible. And uh, for all you know, the GST may go through this, this session itself. There are um, one or two other features of the Rajya Sabha that I observe. For example, some of us, Rajya Chandrasekhar and I, uh, were part of the um, real estate amendment bill process. And um, this had been introduced originally by the Congress. In, and introduced in the Rajya Sabha because the bill would not lapse. So one of the features that this institution brings to the table is the policy making, regardless of election cycle, right? And then this bill had been debated in a standing committee when the new government came, they changed some things, but in the Rajya Sabha we insisted on a sec second select committee. And um, uh, it was a wonderful multi-partisan effort. The chair has been rewarded with the, uh, with the and uh, and really still in the in the uh, you know so, so that uh, is an example of how uh, in my own experience the Rajya Sabha has been able to deliberate, strengthen the legislation that comes from the Lok Sabha and really makes a significant difference. So overall, um, except for these dangers that sorry, also you're saying working across party lines. Yes, yeah, that's right. The committee process in general, I think, works across party lines, not just in this instance, but in standing committees which comprise of members of both houses. Because those are away from the TV cameras, there is a, uh, there is a certain amount of uh, detailed engagement with issues. Honesty. Uh, well, I don't know about that. Honesty is there all the time. <laughs> but uh, you know, questioning of witnesses in a much more detailed manner, things like that, that gives um, uh, standing committees and other committees a chance to really go much deeper and to go in as a neutral body rather than as, a, as belonging to the government or otherwise. I mean, just to give you an example, I'm part of the HRD committee where on a bill, the juvenile justice bill, where Menaka Gandhi wanted, the minister wanted some particular uh, age limit for or age uh, for uh, juvenile offenders to be treated as adults, the standing committee chaired by a BJP person uh, ended up, uh, you know, would be doing that selection. We had a very different viewpoint. So, so basically, the system uh, certainly works well. I think it works reasonably as intended. The original logic being that 
it will cool off the passions of uh, the lower house. It will also allow the upper house to essentially um, not get bulldozed. A party that is in a majority in the lower house can bulldoze legislation. And uh, you know this ensures that because people have elected over time, the composition changes uh, much more gradually. And your know, other point, last point I want to make, you talked about a fractured polity, a fact that of a party is representing uh, you know, language, um, uh, religion, denomination, region, caste, that those sorts of parties are emerging. Well, that is, a, that is the way India's democracy should work, that anyone who wants to form a group and push any ideology which uh, people are in favor of, they should be able to organize and win elections and get representatives in both houses. So in that sense, this is not unrepresentative of what is happening in the larger context. So I'll stop there and just